73.2 million dollars that is what rand gold resources has delivered and in terms of gold production 308,628 ounces never forget the 28 ounces at the end that's the key thing they are to be acquired by barrack gold corporation joining us now for his first interview of the day it is mark bristow he joins us uh with the numbers mark good to see you uh bloomberg Hello, intelligence Miller. wrote this about you Crazy big gold miner, you and Barrett Gold getting together. How do you grow? What will the new benchmark be when you and I talk when this company gets together with Barrett? How are you going to grow and deliver value in this marriage? So, man, this morning, um, it's all about quality. Quality assets, quality management, quality financials. And that's, uh, that's what I've always said, uh, you know. Uh, if you want to be in mining, a good place to start is with uh, world-class, high-quality assets. And then you can survive the cyclicality of the, the industry, and particularly the gold industry. And I know that you've, you've been a, quite a puncher when it comes to cost-cutting. I want to talk to you about the cash pile. Put the two of you together, and it really is a, a marriage that creates cash, $2.7 billion. If you want quality assets, do you think the way forward for the new entity will be to use some of that cash to buy more assets? Sure. Uh, you know, I think the, the big thing is to lift the, 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 the main currency, which is your equity. And then it's about delivery and we, you've already seen uh, the markets recognized uh, uh, um, this uh, deal in lifting both share prices higher since the announcement over 20 percent but I think that that's the key and you know Rangel brings two what we call tier one asset uh, two of the top ten assets in in the world and Barrick brings three and they're two more visible immediately in Nevada and, uh, and then it's got the Dem Dominican Republic asset. And so we'll focus in on those what we call tier one assets. And with good assets, as you know, you get good cash flow. And, and our drive and mine particularly is to get the new barrack back to the Rand Gold model where you are delivering returns through dividends and uh, equity um, uh, increases. Yeah, something that shareholders always like, markets, Juliet, in Singapore. Do you think that this merger is likely to signify uh, that we could see some more consolidation in the gold sector? Juliet, yes. You know, I've been on record for a long time that this industry really does need reinvention. And I believe that this uh, transaction uh, brings that, uh, uh, the, the concept of uh, value creation through combinations uh, to the fore and and I'm sure that uh, well I have no doubt that the industry to remain relevant has to rearrange itself there are too many management teams not enough uh, assets to go around and we really need to put those assets together with the best management teams so in your experience how does it rearrange itself what's your relationship like with John Thornton no, very constructive. We wouldn't have done this deal if there wasn't a constructive relationship. And I think we, you know, he comes from outside the mining industry. I'm very much part of the mining industry, although always been a little bit of an outsider. And I think both of us share uh, the uh, common vision of the fact that if you're going to be mining, you should be able to compete in the in the global market uh, for for all uh, uh, investors, not only specific uh, specialist investors like the the gold industry has become used to. Mark, obviously the, the market wants to know about certain asset plays. We'll talk, I want to talk to you a little bit more about your roles in in a moment. But when it comes to Acacia. Um, if the, when the merger goes through, what happens there? In, in your mind's eye, is it, I want to spin off Acacia, or, or how do you look at it, or what's the conversation with Thornton been around that? So Acacia is, a, is an unfortunate situation. It's, a, it's become a bit of an orphan. It, you know, it was originally uh, had lots of um, potential, and then it, 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 it had its own challenges, and then people try to sell it. And... Um, when you look at it today, it's, uh, it's certainly, by any metrics, uh, undervalued. 
And it's how do we as a major shareholder, the new barrack as a major shareholder, bring that to account. As you know, Rangold has a lot of African experience. We believe in partnerships with our host countries. And, uh, and so there's, and the, the assets have a r real potential. And so it's about how can we, together with the, the host country, find a way forward that delivers value for all stakeholders. And I'm confident that we'll find that, uh, that common path and, and be able to unlock value for the benefit of everyone.